Warning, this video contains one of the best mods I have ever tried. It also contains scenes of gratuitous, unnecessary and somewhat disturbing violence. It also contains something that many of you may be afraid of. Welcome to episode 32 of the Fallout 4 Mod Vault. The first mod I'm going to show you has already made it to the hot files of Nexus and it deserves to have done so. The mod is called Quick Trade. And like many other great mods, it is also a very simple mod. It just allows you to go straight to the trade section without having to talk to the trader in advance. It is that simple. I'll leave the trade section and I'll go back in and I can do it very, very quickly, over and over. I'm sure you will notice the similarity between this and the quick loop function that is part of the default vanilla game. You can still talk hey to the settler if you so wish, if you want to change his equipment or just talk to him for some odd reason. But let's face it, the vast majority of Not us right are never going to do that. We're just going to hit trade. And you can do it this quickly. You can just go from vendor to vendor and do your trading without all that annoying chit chat. Some traders will still initiate conversation with you when you first go near to them and there's no real way of stopping that I believe and you probably don't want to because of course it would potentially ruin some quests. But most of the time for most traders you'll just be able to skip straight to the barter section. I honestly can't think of any reason not to use this mod. It's one of those mods that once you get used to, I can imagine you would not be able to live without. If you are an arachnophobe, you may wish to skip the next mod. I will put an annotation on screen right now that will allow you to skip straight to the next mod and there will be links in the description to each and every mod. If you are afraid of spiders, you may wish to click one of those links right now. As you have probably guessed, this mod adds large mutated spiders to the commonwealth. These little fellas are not as large as something like the Rad Scorpion, but if you ask me, they more than make up for it in creepy factor. There is also an albino rad spider. And just to make the ooh factor even greater, there is a glowing version. In fact, they come in a variety of different flavors, all of them pretty damned horrible. You can find them out in the Commonwealth and they are hostile, so be warned. Expect a fight. And they are a little tougher than you would imagine. So it's best to have some decent firepower and preferably, oh God, a bit of support. Although in this case, I'm slightly more worried about my support than the spiders. Yeah, that's a pretty typical uh, reaction when you see a spider, isn't it? The next mod also deserves a warning. It is a little brutal and gory. It does involve kind of gratuitous violence. So again, if you don't like that, you should probably skip this mod. This mod is actually called Live Dismemberment and it makes it so that if a limb is damaged, crippled, there is a chance that it will actually get blown off. The chance depends on which version of the mod you use, but it's pretty gross actually. If I shoot this raider's arm, there is a chance, I think I crippled it, but I didn't knock it off. Let's do the other arm. There you go, as you see, he's lost his arm. I chose a legendary raider so he could survive this, and he's decided to run away from me with... Okay, perhaps preferring to drown. Yeah, uh, as I told you, it's pretty grotesque and pretty brutal. You can shoot their legs off, as you can see, which is really horrific. It does stop them running away. 
As I mentioned, the dismembering does not happen every time. And in fact, this is the second time out of, I don't know, 20 attempts to dismember a leg that it's happened. That's with the default setting. It seems to work on super mutants and humans. Give me a second, I think I need to shoot this guy. You can remove their limbs and let's face it, we're all thinking of the Black Knight right about now, aren't we? Yes, we are. On really tough enemies, you can pretty much remove all of their limbs before you put them out of your misery. Although, I will tell you, I tried to get the same dismember effect on Death Claws and only managed it on their heads, which, you know, generally kills them. Although, I did have one instance of a headless Death Claw running around for a few seconds. That was kind of creepy. As I mentioned, there are different versions of the mod. Some of the versions will allow the dismemberment to occur so often it's kind of comical. So if you really enjoy a bloody and quite brutally disgusting style of combat, that's the version you're going to want to go for. But if you're looking for something where the dismemberment happens very rarely, you can also have that. And that will make it so that when it happens, it will be a bit more shocking and perhaps even cause you to feel some sympathy for your enemy. But let's be honest, in all probability, you really are just going to giggle like a maniac and take advantage of the situation. In a world where hope is little, but music is plentiful, Old World Tunes provides a 24-hour broadcast for even the most downtrodden wanderer. Billy, Ella, Crosby, the ink spots and more are at your disposal. There's more coming up next. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the storyteller now has his very own radio station. This station comes complete with over 130 tracks, all of them with that old world feel. You're going to recognize many of the songs and they all feel very appropriate for the Fallout world. The host for this radio station is, as I've already mentioned, the storyteller from the Shoddycast lore series. And you will get a special appearance of Three Dog, although I didn't quite get to hear him. Here's a song that reminds me of my time on the West Coast. Hope this one reminds you of home too. This radio station actually comes with a settings hollow tape that has its own skin. And if you actually use this tape, it allows you to increase the volume of the selected radio station. So I'm going to boost it by 12 decibels. It will now restart and then there you go. It's a little louder. And there is even a radio with a custom skin that you can make in the workshop menu. Now, this is a standalone radio station, if you like, but it also comes as part of a compilation called Old World Radio Boston, and that has a lot of channels. I've actually covered that in a previous video, if you want to go and see the variety of radio stations you get there. So, if you're a fan of great radio stations or just a fan of the storyteller, this is one to check out. In a previous video, I showed you a mod called Do It Your Shelf, which allowed you to have pre-made collections of clutter that could be placed neatly in shelves. And I also, in yet another video, showed you a mod called OC Decorator, which allowed you to place individual pieces of clutter wherever you liked. But now there is a new mod called Dino's Decorations that allows you to place clutter in a slightly more organized manner than OC Decorator, but not quite to the same degree as Do It Your Shelf. So as you can see here, I've got collections of ammo, folders, even hollow tapes neatly, well, not so neatly arranged in a pile. I've got cue balls, a checkers board, pots, pans, 
And over here at the kitchen, we've got baskets filled with bottles. We've got kitchen utensils and plenty more. There are glass pyramids, collections of vases, and even a little tray with some plants. Now, there are only 40 arrangements at the moment, but honestly, it's more than enough if you're using something like Do It Your Shelf and OC Decorator. I see this mod as sitting somewhere in between the two. Each collection is smaller and less detailed than Do It Your Shelf, but these mini collections can be placed pretty quickly, a lot quicker than you could, say, get the same effect with OC Decorator. As simple as it is, this is yet another essential weapon in the fight against boring settlements. This is a sentry bot. And this is a comfy chair. A comfy chair? And this is a comfy chair with sentry bot legs. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Automa Throne. Yes, somebody made a comfy chair with sentry bot legs, and yes, you can sit on it, and yes, you can drive around in it. You can wander the wasteland in comfort in your own armchair. You find the throne outside Vault 111. However, I can tell you, you cannot ride in it whilst wearing power armor. You are going to have to leave your power armor behind if you wish to drive around in this vehicle. There is also an Automa Thrones add-ons mod that adds, well, hover bikes to the mod. The animation is a little off, as you can see. He's kind of stood on the bike. The mod authors are working on this animation, and it looks like it's very much a work in progress. There is a variation of the hover bike called the Much Up bike, which is, well, as you can see, it's a little wider. It is also possible to build a special minigun that can be attached to the hover bike. You build that in the chemistry station. And as you can see, the animation actually fits with the minigun better. The minigun is a little difficult to use whilst in third person, as you can see. It's a little easier in first person, but riding the bike in first person is somewhat difficult, so as you can see, um, it's kind of best if you keep switching between the views when you want to... Oh, God. Lay down the bullets. Oh, God. Excuse me. <laughs> but even, even if it is a little clumsy at the moment, and by little, obviously, I mean very... It is, oh god, a ridiculous amount of fun. Oh, a vertibird. Oh god. Yes! Yes! Oh god. Hover bike with minigun. One vertibirds, zero. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all we have time for this week. I am going to be ending, of course, with the screenshots that you guys have been posting. They are great, as always. And if you would like to contribute a screenshot for me to use in one of my videos, I will leave a link down below that will take you to a video that will show you exactly how you can do that. And let me thank you in advance for doing so. I will be back next week for the last Mod Vault before my summer vacation, and I would love it if you could join me for that video. I look forward to seeing you there, and until then, remember as always, have fun. If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com, and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings, and filter by mods only. Click for search, and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod, and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.